Welcome to my channel. It's Nicole from Dogo Argentino USA. I'm going to read you an article that was directly written by Dr. Antonio Norez Martinez, and it is about the history of the Dogo Argentino. It was published in Diana Magazine number 94 in October 1947. And the reason I think this article is important is because it is directly linking what Dr. Martinez had in mind when he designed this breed. Sirs, the Hunter Center of Buenos Aires has given me the undeserved honor of giving me their hospitality and this is their prestigious grandstand. I accept it pleased with the conviction that benevolence in the trial must replace the lack of personal merit. Logical corollary of the cordiality that I am dispensed with, which I interpret as an index of the high spiritual hierarchy of this environment. To the Honorable Directive Commission, as well as to its worthy president, my deep recognition for the distinction with the gratitude that nobility obliges. Gentlemen, no species of creation has suffered as much the consequences of the laws of evolution as the canine species. His fidelity to man from prehistory to the present day has made him acquire an admirable faculty of adaptation to environmental and geographic changes created by the needs that struggle for life imposed on his master when not for the great geological shocks or under human whim itself. Who has not observed the enormous morphological differences that exist between a large dog of Great Dane breeding and the tiny Beijing? Between the slender and aristocrat Irish Wolfhound and the achondroplastic Dachshund, between the beautiful fur of a setter or a collie and the bare skin of a pila. Is there not more difference in morphology of the races that we have just compared that among those that exist and distinguish a lion from a tiger, a flame from a guanco, or between an anthropoid and a human being of primitive race? Why is it that between two specimens of the same species and only in this species of the extensive zoological ladder, can there be such large differences that they exceed those that separate different species? There are only gentlemen in answer to this question. It is due to that magnificent faculty of adaptation that the canine species has acquired following its master throughout all ages of history, by all paths of the planet, and in the open air of all the climates of the earth to serve with equal self-denial to a master of all races, of all characters, and of all cultures. Because, gentlemen, history teaches that there in the night of the centuries, there on the thresholds of prehistory, where the first path and the first floor of the human foot appeared, right there, then as now, next to that footprint was that of his noble and faithful friend, the unusual companion in joy and pain, in misery and opulence, in illusion and despair, in the cradle and in the grave, in life and in death. There was the dog, the only being so noble that he is able to lick the master's wound before his own and give his life with pleasure, the only one capable of kissing both his hand when he caresses it and his whip when he whips it. I see, gentlemen, in all this, more than a simple realization of instinct. I see the superior feeling outlined in his psychogenesis. I see in the first gesture some charity and much self-denial. In the second, much gratitude, and in the third, the sublime gesture of forgiveness. That magnificent adaptability, he said, of the canine species to an environmental or paratypical change, whether in the psychism or morphology, following the biological paths of evolution or the opposite of involution, is what we have allowed development of the immense number of dog breeds and varieties that we know today. Some set in natural selection, the others by man, whether for practical purposes or for adornment and company, when not on a whim could even be said 
for any of them by an obvious aberration of good human taste. But all the same, always with the same fidelity, at the service of the most tyrant master and lord, known to the creation of El Hombre, to which both the aristocratic pedigree and the humble son of no one serve with equal submission. Taking advantage of this easy adaptation of the species, that ductility to human selection, I set out more than 20 years ago to establish a new breed of dogs that met the necessary conditions to be the useful dog for big game in our country. Because in our impenetrable and virgin forests, the conditions of the hunt are very different from those carried out in the hunting grounds of Europe where the races we imported for these uses were selected. Here we hunt in open mountains of immense extensions where sometimes you have to travel the trail's dragged body on land and the troop of wild boars, whether native or imported, or the puma or the taipir, when they have heard the neighborhood of the pack, if they were not arrested at the time of the encounter with it, it is useless to try to catch them again where there are thousands of hectares in between. All attempts of the hunter and dog are in vain. So what qualities should the dog have for this kind of hunting? In the first place, it must be a dog that beats the mountain in silence, and that only makes itself heard on the prey, because when it does that of the foxhound or that of the other races of Monteria that begin to howl when they find the trail, the hunter who follows him can be sure that he will not charge any peace because the howl of the pack warns the animal which flees many leagues away. In the second, it must be a dog of good smell, but that it vents up like the pointer and not on the trail because in the hunting of Puma, for example, this one to deceive the dogs makes circles when fleeing and returns on his own trail. Other times it climbs a tree, the mole by the common thing and jumps in the distance or it crosses a jump, a precipice, leaving the dogs that follow by its footprint, swirling, confused. On the other hand, when the dog follows the animal by venting, there is no possibility of being deceived, and the known trick of the peccary of separating itself from the troop, remaining hidden among the bushes while the pack chases those who flee, it is useless if the dog vents the animal. For this reason, it is common to hear people from the countryside where there are pumas that the best lion dog is the pointer or his mestizo because he finds it right away and packs it and the hunter can give him the coup de gras. Thirdly, it must be an agile dog, more of a fight than of speed because the boar, the puma, or the peccary is reached by any dog that is not very heavy. And finally, you must be brave above all things. When finding the cougar or the pig, he must pray even if it hurts him and be able to hold him alone until the other dogs or the hunter arrives. And if they do not arrive, he must be able to kill him alone because in our hunts, given the extension of this country, it is not possible to travel hundreds of kilometers carrying jails of 20 or 50 dogs. This is neither practical nor comfortable for us. I consider I'm this not. quality of value to I'm be not. fundamental. You know, because who isn't here where the mountains person. are not cultivated, the pack cannot be followed on horseback because we can barely shoot some videos. Foot. We do not get anything with which the dog pack the animals away from us, and it is impossible to complete them. The practical thing is to find them stretch, as we say, oh, it's beautiful. the provincial that is immediately prey. As for the size of the dog, as the paths of our mountains are very short, medium-sized dogs are more practical. But as in the selection of breeds, you have to choose the strongest specimens, it is appropriate for the breeding to choose those of greater size and weight because raised in the field due to overwork and poor diet, they are always reduced in size. This is the reason for the Creole saying, size enters through the mouth. The quality of value is indispensable also for the guard dog, which is the other purpose of the Dogo Argentina. There is a widespread belief that the guard dog is the one that barks or is able to bite a stranger. With this concept, dogs of all breeds are good guardians, 
But in my opinion, the guard dog must be more than all that. It must be able to be killed by prey in defense of its master or its house. The dog that attacks an intruder is worthless get as a guardian. So can get the film and if get the at first blow or first Thank dagger, you. he would leave his prey to screams. Such an animal does not present any security for its owner, nor deserves, in my opinion, the honorable name of guard dog. I have drawn the general lines that I set out to obtain in the Dogo Argentino, and that you know through the prestigious Diana magazine of this center, if I have succeeded or not, it already belongs to the trial of the fondness of the manly sport of hunting, and to Canophilios, because I, as part, I am included in the generals of the law. In the same adaptability of the canine species to the environmental media to which I have referred, lies the mutability of the character of the different races. So it is essential to keep in mind in the breeding, along with the somatic characters of a fixed standard, education oriented towards the proposed objective, that is to keep in mind the key formula for the improvement of dog breeds enunciated by a distinguished consortium and which is expressed in the following formula, P by M plus E, which means father or mother plus education, which in the genetic language is translated by inheritance plus education and environment, that is genotype plus paratypo. This vigilant gentleman is indispensable in all races for a reason of general biology, because in biology, dynamism is life, inertia is death. Species and races that do not improve deteriorate. Those that do not evolve, involve. But to involve is retrograding. It is to replace the path traveled in the course of the generations. It is synonymous to degenerate because it is to lose the acquired qualities for the proposed purpose. And finally, I apologize, gentlemen, if I put a little passion in my words, but by way of explanation, I want to remind you that the propellant of an idea can be tolerated to be filled with it because passion is the engine. It is the propulsive forces of ideas. Ideas that are born without passion are born dead. That is why the history of mankind is the history of human passion. The biography of his great figures is also the apology of his great passions. I've finished. Dr. Antonio Norez Martinez. I shared this passage with you in part because I feel that it talks about his thought regarding the dog and what he hopes to achieve with the dog. Now, I've heard some people say that this dog is only a hunting dog. And it is clear by this particular article that that is not the only purpose that he felt this dog had. He definitely felt hey, it needed come. to be a guard dog as well. And it talks about how he values a pathway to improve genetics by selecting the strongest of the particular breed because he felt that selecting the strong ones was a pathway to getting a superior dog particularly since field bred dogs tend to be overworked and underfed as he describes. So I would love to hear your thoughts. If you thought this was a value, if you would like to hear some more things, of course, I would like to point out that this is a translation from Spanish into English. And uh, there may be a couple little parts where it's a little rough in that translation. I didn't do the translation. Um, my Spanish is particularly weak. But I thought it was interesting enough that if you had an interest in Dogo Argentinos, that it would be nice to hear an actual piece of writing from the creator of the Dogo Argentino, uh, in part because I think it's very valuable. I think it provides insight into his purpose and the passion he had for this particular dog. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you would like to have more historical pieces that were written by Dr. Antonio Norez Martinez, let me know. I would love to do it for you. As always, please like, comment, share, subscribe. Don't forget to hit that bell notification so that you know every time I post a new video. Thanks and have a dogotastic day.